Welcome back to another video about Foundry Virtual Tabletop, particularly discussing the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition system created by Vetterini. So you can see we're still using Foundry Virtual Tabletop 0.7.8 and the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition system 0.4.6. For this video we're going to have four active modules. The modules that we'll be using are Community Lighting by Blitz, Die So Nice, and Die Stray. Now primarily, this video will be concerned with combat. But before we get into the combat, let's kind of take a look at the scene that we've created. So with this scene, we created an image background of a forest. We have created a terrain effect. We see we've created enemy tokens. Um, we have the professor villain that we created before, Professor Ovitz, and the dead, the creature that we created. And we have three of those. You only really have to create one of a particular entity and then you can drag it out as many times as you would like to have as many as you want for that particular scene. So for this scene we'll have three creatures and one uh, villain. Okay. Now <clears throat> in this the grid is set for one yard so everything's going to be pretty close. All right. So in this particular scenario, you can see when you click on the player token, they have limited vision. They're not able to see the whole scene. But when the keeper clicks off of it or clicks on one of the keeper control tokens, he has full vision of the scene. Now, <clears throat> the player is limited by the fact that it's night and he has a flashlight and that's why we have this kind of uh, dimming effect. We also have a piece of interposing terrain, so we can't really see the campfire of the professor, but we can see the professor sitting near the campfire because he's really not that far away. He's only 10 yards away, so 30 feet, um, so not, not very far. Um, so he can, he can clearly be, be seen. But the, the, the flashlight just doesn't have a very very long beam since it's the 1920s. Now, where does this flashlight effect come from? Well, it's a macro. It's a script that's been created. And this is the script that creates this particular flashlight effect. And it has an effect with it called Blitz Electric Fault. That's why it dims every so often. And that's why we have the community lighting by Blitz as one of our modules to just kind of demonstrate how this can be used. Now the person that created this uh, script is a user by the name of Vass. Um, Vass is very helpful and you can find him on the uh, Chaosium uh, section of, of the Discord, the Foundry Discord. So if you go to Foundry's Discord and go to the Chaosium page or section of the Discord room, um, then you, you, can, you can ask Vass some questions about this particular script and I'm sure he will be glad to share and help you. And I'll see if I can't just paste it in the, um, in the description as well. All right, so <clears throat> in our little scenario here, um, Park Ranger Amundsen, he's, he's gone out into the forest and he has uh, heard that someone has been missing, Professor Ovitz. He's been reported missing and there's a, there's a vehicle nearby that has been parked there for several days. And so um, David Amundsen has been searching for this person in the forest throughout the day and the sun has just set and he sees a campfire off in the distance. So he's making his way to that campfire um, using his flashlight as uh, illumination and as he gets closer um, to the campfire he sees someone sitting next to it and he's very relieved uh, to see this. Um, he could turn off his flashlight as he gets closer but he decides to to leave it on as he approaches. Now uh, Professor Ovitz we can click on his sheet and we can see that we did not give him the listen skill but he should have the listen skill um, as a base so this is where dice tray comes in very handy. Um, since we don't actually have the skill, we couldn't click on it. But what we can do is just roll and say that he has a 20% listen chance. We can roll 
die so nice shows us the dice um, it's just kind of gives that feel of sitting at the tabletop you can hear the dice you can see the dice it's, it's rather nice and uh, Professor Ovitz fails his uh, listen check and he's, he's focusing on the campfire um, he's gone quite insane from um, summoning undead servants to help him uh, open up the tomb of uh, Ezekiel Morrow who was buried on this land well before it became a national park um, seven, seven, a sorcerer from the 1700s so this is why he's here this is why he has these undead servants and uh, park ranger Amundsen has no idea what he's about to step into so as he approaches the campfire um, he gets a clear line of sight on the thing that happens to sit on the opposite side of the campfire an undead entity something that should not exist something that defies human comprehension so he must make a sanity check so we can open up the sheet of this particular creature we can target park ranger Amundsen and he will now have to make a sand check based on witnessing this unspeakable horror so we make a sand check you just click the dice everyone I mean you click the uh, the sand loss it automatically calculates over here that David Amundsen has an 85% sanity so he makes his check and he succeeded he succeeded he got one level of success he rolled a 55 it showed up on dice so nice and you see it here as well he rolled a 55 so he made his check so he only loses one point of sanity so we can just click sand loss here and we can click apply and then if we were to click on his character sheet you can see he's lost one point of sanity it's now an 84 it automatically did it all right wonderful and we can see his daily sand loss is now at a one so he doesn't have an extreme reaction to what he has just witnessed so um, he knows that this is not normal that something is not right and now he is ready uh, to engage whatever this is before him so <clears throat> what we will do is we will set up some combat macros now these aren't necessary you can roll these uh, straight from the character sheet just by clicking on them but if you want to not have to open the character sheet or have it take up space or, or real estate on your screen you can take these macros and place them down on your hotbar and I went ahead and created a, a submachine gun for uh, David Amundsen just to show you how it works in 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 play Okay, that's the only reason I don't love uh, submachine guns and games, but you know they do have a place. So um, now we've created those macros. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and realize at this point that combat is probably about to begin. Uh, Robert Ovitz orders these undead minions to attack, and uh, David Amundsen prepares himself for what is about to happen. So we select all the entities I did not mean to target them let me go back and undo that um, <clears throat> okay there we go now we will select all of them we will right click and toggle combat and that begins combat here now you can click this to roll initiative for everyone in Call of Cthulhu um, things attack or go in dex order um, so we don't really have to roll it's kind of predetermined but there you go there's there's our initiative orders so David Amundsen will go first now maybe he doesn't understand what's going on exactly but he sees this thing across from the campfire and it's repulsive to him so um, if his weapon was readied if he already had his shotgun in hand then he would have a plus 50 to his initiative but he did not he had it shouldered so he must unshoulder his shotgun to use it and that's what he is going to do so let's let's begin combat he wants to eliminate this thing that he sees across from him so he targets it and he is going to fire his double-barreled shotgun at whatever this thing might be 
Now he's going to fire a single shot. It's at 7.28 yards away, so it's not at point blank. And he is going to fire a single shot from his double-barreled shotgun. So he's going to roll, and he gets a regular success. We can roll damage. It did seven points of damage. You can click and see the 46 led to seven points of damage. You can see the 61 was rolled, and he can inflict pain by clicking here. So the entity took seven points of damage. But if you remember, when we created this creature, we gave it three points of armor, so it should only take four points of damage. So when we go look, sure enough, it automatically deducted the three points from the armor, so it only took four points of damage, so it still has 11 hit points left. Now, because David Amundsen is using a double barrel shotgun, he can take two shots in the same round without penalty. So we'll go ahead and have him do that. He has the entity targeted still. He will fire his double barreled shotgun yet again at the entity. Still at base range, single shot. He rolls, he hits with a 75. Wow, just barely. He rolls damage and does 17 points of damage. We will inflict pain. This should do 14, which should be enough to take the entity down. Did 17 points of damage. We can click on this entity and we can see that it has been eliminated. It is dead. So this is the one that has been removed from the combat. It is now dead. So we move to the next turn and it is Robert Ovitz's turn. He orders these other undead minions to attack. So they will charge up from the bottom here and move their full movement and make melee attacks against our poor park ranger. Okay. So the first one, okay, it will approach and make its melee attack. Deadly claws. Rolls fighting, gets a regular success. Now, David Amundsen, he can choose to fight back, which is what he will do. He has a 50% chance himself to fight back against the entity. Well, I think I have the wrong person targeted. So let's let me double let me double back a little. I've got myself targeted. <laughs> okay, so now I have the proper person targeted. We will make the attack. You can see there is the deadly claws. This is who's being attacked. I should have paid more attention. He will make his roll. Then fighting back, he will fight back with his unarmed. Ah, and he succeeded. He rolled higher than the entity. So David Amundsen, um, even though they're both a regular success, uh, it doesn't mean that that he doesn't take the damage. He would have had to get a hard or an extreme success, which he did not do. So he ends up taking the damage. He took three points of damage from the creature. All right, so three points of damage, so we inflict pain. Three points of damage should be removed from his character sheet, and it has been. So now he has nine of 12 hit points. Now the other creature will attack him. With its deadly claws. Now he's outnumbered, because there's two of them now. So it will attack him, and it got a regular success. Okay, it took the lower of the two dice. It got a regular success. It fights back. He got a regular success. No, he got a hard success. So the dead takes damage from him because his success was hard versus a regular. He does six points of damage to the thing. We can inflict the six points of damage to it. And because it has the three points of armor, you can see now it has 12 of 15 hit points. We move on to the next round of combat. So, uh, just to make things simple and give you a good explanation of how um, 
submachine guns work. We will take a few steps back and he will pull out his submachine gun. And let me make sure that I have it loaded. I do. His, his bullets are out for his double barrel shotgun because he fired both. But he does have his submachine gun. Who can it hit? Well, a submachine gun fires in an arc, so we can actually use the cone template here to see if it hits both, which it does. Okay. And we can target both of these creatures. And he can use his submachine gun. So he will target one for full auto. Um, it automatically assumes that he will use six bullets in the burst because he has a 60 skill, but you can change that. You can lower it to the minimum or keep it at six or anything in between. So he's going to do six. He's going to fire six shots at the first entity. And then he's going to target the other one and fire six shots at it. So because he moved between one target and the next it will use an extra bullet okay so let's see what happens wow he was actually successful with both hits so he can roll damage he did 14 points of damage to one and 15 to the other we can inflict pain and see what happened so this one still has six hit points and this one has 10 now, why is that? Because they get armor for each damaging attack. So, this one did 6, this one did 4, and 4. So, that would have been um, 3 points, 1 point, 1 point, and 4 points, 2 points, no points. Okay? So, that's why that worked the way that it did. So, both entities are still up. Okay, which is absolutely terrifying for David Amundsen. But um, that gives you a good example of how different weapons work in the game. So <clears throat> I hope you can see how the process of automation works, how it makes combat a lot smoother, a lot faster, um, and it automatically calculates things for you. Foundry and Veterini system are fantastic and extremely, extremely helpful. Just want to say thanks to the uh, Call of Cthulhu 7th edition system creator Veterini or Havelock V. Um, make sure you come to the Discord and uh, give him some, some thanks. Uh, I'm sure he would really appreciate it. So um, I'll make another video. We'll talk about combat a little bit more and uh, how to do combat with uh, theater of the mind using this system. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, keep on rolling, guys.